The heart already is searching and looking and analyzing. It's interpreting the situation. Wherever you get your podcasts from, or our own website, prismoftorah.com. This is The Prism of Torah with Rabbi Saf Aaron Prisman. Shalom Avrocha. In this week's parsha, Parashas Shlach Lecha, for Vnei Eretz Yisroel, we know that the parsha begins with the famous episode where Moshe Rabbeinu sends shlichim, spies, a representative from each tribe, 12 people, to go and spy on the land. As it says, Shlach Lecha Anashim Vayasuru Es Eretz Knan. Send people to spy on the land. Vayaturu is an interesting word. Literally, it means to seek, to search. In this context, it means to spy. Rashi and other Rishonim, such as the Ramban, makes sure, make sure we are aware that the same Lashon, the same word, the same Shorish, is used in the Parsha at the end of the Parsha. We have the Parsha of Tzitzis, as it says, that the, pur- that the purpose of Tzitzis, that you should have on your four-cornered garment, you look at it, and you will remember all the mitzvahs Hashem commanded us. And here's the punchline, at least in this week's Torah. And that idea of tzitzis will ensure that you do not seek in a negative sense. Again, the same Lashon, as Rashi tells us, it's the same Lashon as we had at the beginning with the Meraglim, you shouldn't be laid astray by, by your heart and your eyes to do things that are not appropriate in the eyes of Hashem. And the stop sign to this would be the tzitzis, as we know. Tzitzis in the ideal state should have blue on them, tcheles, and that tcheles reminds us of the shamayim, the Gemara says, and the shamayim will remind us of the kisei akab dovekadosh and that will link us in our thoughts HaKadosh Buchu, which will ensure we'll do mitzvahs and we won't let our eyes and our hearts lead us to, to sin. So the main question I want to deal with, it seems like there's a lot of depth between the two parshias, the parshia of the Miraglim, that we know to ensure we're all aligned over here. The Miraglim were sent to check out the land. What did they do? They came back and they said, it's true, the land has some amazing characteristics such as look at the fruits we brought back the grapes were huge the the pomegranate everything was unbelievable however it's not a place for us it's a crazy place this land kills its own people that dwell in it when we were there everyone was dropping like flies Meanwhile, we know the Midrash tells us that at the end of the day, <laughs> HaKadosh Buchu orchestrated that they drop like flies for their favor so that they will be preoccupied with all the funerals and not realize that people are spying on them. In any case, the Miraglim said how bad the land is and it's dangerous and it's only giants can live there, etc., etc. And the only ones that screamed out against them, as we know, was Yeshua Benun and Kalev Ben Yefune. But the question we want to deal with is, so what's the kesher between these two parshas? It can't be just a, an idea of, oh, look, it's the same word over here and over there. Why is Rashi taking time out to tell us that? I would like to try to suggest an idea that links the two parshas together, the first parsha and the last parsha in parsha Shlach Lecha, the Miraglim at the beginning and parsha Tzitzis at the end. Before we answer this question, I want to, I want to raise an idea we said several years ago in the Parsha Tzitzis. If you look carefully, in the Parsha Tzitzis, as we already mentioned, it says the reason you have Tzitzis is because you look at the Tzitzis and you'll remember what life's all about and you wouldn't be led astray by your hearts and then it says by your eyes who will, might try to get you to, to, to perform some sins. On that, Rashi tells us, Ha'ayin ro'a, the eyes see things and that triggers their heart to want things that are not appropriate, and as a result, the body goes ahead and puts into action something that he sees, ah, oh, this looks amazing, and then he wants to do it. So I remember at the time, I said of Volt B'Shem Rav Mishkovsky, Zatzal, 
that he said, wait a second, this Chazal that Rashi is quoting seems to be not in the correct order based on the Pasuk. The Pasuk itself says that you shouldn't be led astray first by your hearts, and only afterwards, whereas based on the idea Rashi is bringing down, B'Shem Chazal, he says, first the eye sees, and then it triggers the heart to want something that's not appropriate. And then, So you see that it's first the eyes and then their heart, whereas the Pasuk says, First the heart and then their eye. Lotatu achilevavchem and only afterwards achayinichem. So what's going on? So he said a modikavot, which is mamish emes lamitoy, and that is that the pasuk, the 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 chazal is telling us the order of events, what really happens, physically speaking, technically speaking. It's true. A person sees something, then he gets all excited, and it triggers his his, and then after he sees it, it triggers his heart to want to do something. And then he goes on ahead and uses his body parts to perform the Avera. However, what the Pasuk is saying is the depth of what's going on over here. Meaning every person has a pre-programmed heart. The heart already is searching and looking and analyzing from a certain perspective. It's interpreting the situation the way it would like to. And hence, the eyes are pre-programmed to see based on what the heart is telling them to be pre-programmed as. And hence, when a person sees something not appropriate, there's two ways he can interpret the situation. And that's the idea over here. If a person has a heart that he didn't pre-program appropriately, as a result, what's going to happen? He's going to interpret the situation the way his heart is pre-programmed to tell the eyes to interpret. And that's going to lead him to do something that's not appropriate. That Sadiqim are in such a high level that their heart is so pre-programmed in a correct fashion that Sadiqim, Chazal tell us, Liban Birshusam. The heart is totally in their ownership. Ownership of what? Of the mind, of the brain. Because we know that the way you're supposed to interpret the situation is not by the heart. It's really by your mind. Your mind is your das. Das is seichel. It's where the Torah resides, a person learns Torah, based on that he should interpret things, and if a person has a, his image is not clear based on his mind, that's why you have to go to a gadol. Eine ha'eda, who should our eyes be? They should be the Eine ha'eda, the big doyle ador, the talmid chachamim, that they have a clear mind to be able to decide for us what's right. But each person in his own world, his mind is the one that should decipher and translate the situation, and he should not be pulled by emotions. Just to bring it into practicality, when a person to goes to a certain house, depends on how his heart is pre-programmed, has pre-programmed his eyes, he's either going to search to see what the house is all about based on furniture, because that's what speaks to him, or he's going to interpret it based on, oh, interesting, what farm do they have? With this idea, we can now answer our main question. What is the connection between the two Parshias, the Meraglim and Parshat Tzitzis? Well, as we spoke before, the Meraglim's mistake was, at least they should have been neutral. All they were asked is to go there and tell us what they saw. And they should give it to the Eina Aida, to Moshe Rabbeinu, who was in charge. He's the so-called brain of the whole, of the whole nation, because he had the most mind of Torah to decipher and translate what they saw. He would have told them straight away. Huh. Of course the land is great, just like Yeshua ben Nun and Kalev ben Yifuneh said. It's just that you're misinterpreting the situation. Yes, people died, but the land doesn't eat up the people that dwell in it. HaKadosh Baruch Hu ensured that would happen to try to protect you. Your whole, it's such an optical illusion what you saw. It's, you're misinterpreting the situation. At least just tell us neutral what you saw. But no, you're even interpreting it the wrong way. And why is that? Because their heart was pre-programmed, as Chazal tell us, they already went in there wanting to see what they could see that's not good. So they tried to interpret every situation they saw in a negative way. Similarly, we, we see in the Gemara and Sanhedrin that Eicha, we know, is written in the order of Aleph base. Hence, it starts with Eicha, Aleph. The only ones that are out of order is the Ois, Pe and Ein. Why? So Chazal tell us in Sanhedrin. Because they were Makdim, the pet to the ein, they started talking before they saw, and hence they are going to end up crying for for the future generations, which we know Tisha B'Av fell on the same day. Hakadosh Baruch Hu orchestrated that way as the day of the Chet Ameraglim. 
because they were crying for no reason. HaKadosh Buhu will make sure, Mida Kenel Gemida, you're going to be crying for the future generations on this day. And that is precisely the connection with the Pasha of Tzitzis. Because just like we should not, just like the Meraglim did the wrong thing by misinterpreting the situation, so too the Tzitzis is there to ensure, to constantly remind us what life is all about. And that everything, all we should concentrate on doing the mitzvahs that Hashem commanded us. And not let other parts of our body, such as our hearts, lead us in the wrong way. Everything should be based on the Torah. The mitzvahs, they come from the Torah. The Torah helps us, which resides in the mind, and the mind should direct us which way to go and how to translate the situation. Perhaps that's the oimik, that's the depth of what Rashi and Adar Rishonim are trying to tell us, that there is, that these two parshiyas of Tzitzis and Meraglim are very tightly coupled, that just like the Meraglim, Latu et they did in the wrong way by translating it based on their hearts and their personal wantings, which were not correct, so too, tzitzis should ensure we don't do that and we don't let our eyes and hearts view things in a way that are not matim, that are not Torah-based. As we know in the Western culture, everything is against that. Everything is live life, live it up, just do it, do whatever. Everything is just fulfill your taivas. And we have to remember that we have a whole mitzvah, probably more than one mitzvah, but mainly the mitzvah of tzitzis to remind us, don't do that. That is not what life is all about. And that is not where you're get, really going to feel a good sense of fulfillment. Because that's not why Hashem created the world. As we know, and we mentioned several times, Mr. Lashem says it at the beginning. Thank you for joining us. This is the Prism of Torah. Visit our website, prismoftorah.com where you'll find a full archive of hundreds of past Tivri Torah. Subscribe to the podcast, leave us a review, and don't forget to share with your friends and family. Sponsorship opportunities are available for all of our episodes. Thank you, Yonavefa, for your recording equipment. Produced by Ellie Podcast Productions.